Hi students, let's see if we can finish this bowling alley scene today, shall we? So I'm gonna create this lane. We're going to make it out of a cube. We could go and Google and find the specific dimensions and convert those dimensions to meters and add those in, or we could just do it to scale by just looking at it and seeing what looks right in our scene. Um, I've actually gone in and added the bowling alley at these dimensions, and it literally looks like the bowling alley is about a mile long compared to our pins. So I'm just gonna do it by eyeball. Now, we're also going to add a wooden texture so that you can just see how easy it is to go find some texture on Google and apply that to your meshes. What a fun thing to do. And I'll teach you really quick how the UV editing wrap goes, or unwrap I should say, which means that you can lay out your object onto your texture and decide where you want that texture to fall on your object surface. So before I get started, I just want to Google, I'm going to do like bowling alley lane texture and see if anything comes up. And sure enough, if I look in images, things do come up. I want to look for only large things. So I'm going to click on the tools option under images and go to size and make sure that it says large. Uh, the reason for that is because I don't want it to look pixelated and funny. So I'm going to look for something that looks like I could just lay it right out onto, oh, that's a fun one. Can you imagine a bowling alley like that? <laughs> I could be here all day looking at images, right? I don't know about you, but yeah, I could. I'm going to just go ahead and try this one right here. This looks like it could work or I can scroll down a little bit and see if there's something else that looks better. I'm not a total fan of it. Bling. Wood lane texture. Try revising. Oh, look at that. Pine bowling lane tabletop. That is beautiful. Okay. So look at the size of that. 3,000 by 1,200 pixels. That's big. Let's take that one. Okay. So I'm going to right click on that. And I will save this image into my D drive. Uh, you can do your C or D drive, in my 3D animation folder under Bowling Alley. And I will call this my Wood Lane Texture and hit enter. Okay, so once you have some texture saved, um, let's move to the next part. So in the last video, you had your pin set up and you saved that as bowling version six. So here we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get that lane and I'm going to use a cube to do that. So I will add a mesh cube and obviously that's way too thick. I'm going to hit the number three on my number pad to go into orthopedic side view and I will hit S to scale and I want to hit Z because I'm going to isolate my scaling along just the Z axis. And that looks like that should be about thick enough. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can make sure that the top of the floor is in line with the Y axis. So G to grab and move it and Y, and we can move it, oops, I don't wanna go left and right. I wanna go up and down, Z, I should say. Okay, and then just go ahead and drop that where it looks good. And just, you can check to make sure that it is sitting right on top, your pins and ball are right on top of it. Good, so then I'm gonna zoom back a little bit and I will hit S because I wanna scale that lengthwise along the Y axis. So here we go, and just make that about the length that it looks like it would look good. And then you can go G to grab it and Y to move it so that your pins are at the end of the lane, right? And then come over here and go, okay. Does that look about the way a bowling alley should look? Is it too long? Maybe it's a little long just for the sake of this scene. So I am going to scale it S, Y, a little shorter, just because I want to be able to see those pins when I'm standing on one end of the lane really well. And G, Y, slide it up a little bit. And I can scroll in and just check to make sure that that looks good at that side. I think it looks great. 
So let's go in to our materials. Make sure that you have your bowling lane selected. I named mine lane and click plus to create a slot and new and you can call that lane. Let's change the preview to a cube if you have your preview window open. You don't have to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be previewing what's happening over here. Make sure that you have principled VSDF selected and that'll be there if use nodes is in blue. And then when you come down here to base color, instead of clicking on the base color, you're gonna click on the little dot to the right of it. And you'll notice that when you do that, you have all these other options. And I'm going to select image texture. So we're gonna be able to import that image as a texture. So once you've done that, you'll notice that that kind of changed the look of that a bit. I'm going to click open and I called it what? Lane, wood lane texture down here at the bottom. And I will open that up and you can see that it has applied the wood texture to the lane which is great. That's what we wanted it to do. It doesn't exactly look the way that I thought it would though. So this is why I wanted to teach you a little bit about UV editing. So if you click up here at the top, you'll notice that there are these different window setups. And so for UV editing, here's the setup right here. And I go, oh, okay, well, I can kind of see what's happening right now. Um, this floor is not even configured in the right direction. So can I select all of this and maybe I need to rotate that here and I'm just gonna hit R and I'm gonna rotate it around. Okay, so let's see how that impacts the way my lane looks over here. I'm not seeing it. I just need to slide this over a little bit and then click over here so that I can actually see those changes. That actually looks quite a bit better. So I'm going to slide this UV map over and I want to take kind of a different look at this and I think it might be a little wider than I need it to be compared to where I have my pins. I'm going to do a quick file, save as a version 7, and for some reason I'm having a hard time selecting my object, and the reason why is because I'm in edit mode, so I'm going back into object mode. Okay, now that I have that, let me go ahead and just scale this a little bit. S and X and make that a little narrower so that those pins are kind of sitting right on the edge. Zoom in and earlier I was telling you that you could put a background in and I had grabbed a reference image in the very beginning of this really groovy little bowling alley scene. So I am going to go ahead and import that so I can add that and remember image now, if I want to add that, I actually have to add that as a plane because when I go to render, if I've added it as a reference or a background, it's not gonna show up in my render. It actually has to be a mesh object. A plane is a mesh object. So I'm gonna add that image as a plane. And if you have to go back to the very first video, that's fine, go ahead and do it. But here's that bowling alley background that I picked up that I loved. I'm gonna go ahead and import that now. All right, so it's imported it uh, sideways and obviously I want that to be at the end of my lane. So it looks like I can just come over here and rotate that around, what, the Z axis. So I'm gonna hit zero uh, for Z and on the rotation bit that way it's not rotated around Z and I will hit S and let's just go ahead and scale that up. And I just absolutely love that scene. So that looks great, okay? 
And now it's obviously a little too far forward, so I'm gonna hit G and Y, and I'm gonna slide it back a little bit. Perfect, so it's behind my scene a touch. And so I've got this groovy scene going on. Um, I'm having such a great time with this, and I hope that you are too. Why don't you go out and find something cool that you can use. And then the other thing you wanna think about is your lighting. So click on your uh, rendered shading over here, your rendered viewport, and check and see how it is. So I know I had my light turned off at one time, so it wasn't in the way but I'm pretty sure that now I have my light on. There's my light right there. Um, it's casting some shadows, which is great. I, remember, I do have the ability to come over and play around with my lighting settings. I just have to select my light, so I'm gonna select my light, and I'm not sure even where it's at in my scene right now, so I can scroll back and take a look. Maybe it's on the other side of that wall, so I'm gonna hit G and Y and pull it over here and see if I see it anywhere. Hmm. Maybe it's up higher than I anticipated it was. Where are you, light? <laughs> ah, it is, it's way higher than I thought. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna go G, Y, slide it over here a little bit, and G, Z, and pull it down so it's in my view. Okay, and then I can go back in here and take a look at how I've got that set up. I'm liking the little cast shadows, that's fun. And if you wanna set up some other lighting, if that's not working for you, you can change it to sun lighting or spot lighting or area lighting. Ooh, area lighting looks really cool. And just remember that you can adjust the power. Sometimes I've had to adjust my power up to like 30,000 before I was seeing a difference. So I'm gonna go back to the 1000 where it was at. I like the lighting, it looks good. Now the other thing that you can do to set up this scene is you could just grab your pins and you can um, take your ball and G, move that. And I'm probably gonna do that along the X axis first, drop it and then G along the Y axis and bring it back here so that it's kind of um, gone through the ball, the pins, sorry. And then just grab these and um, you can hit G and move it and R and rotate it. And you can start getting your pins and having fun with them so that they look like they're flying through the air, right? So see what you can do here to just create this scene of these pins being thrown and flung into the air. And have a lot of fun with this so set it up make it look cool and then take a look there okay and then wherever you're at with it just grab a nice little screenshot I have that bowling in there. Okay, so click on your, I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of um, get rid of this little UV map over here, slide that over. I want to set up my camera. I don't know if you guys remember how to do that. I'm gonna scroll back just a little bit because um, if you remember, your camera won't exactly take up the whole screen. So do you remember what to hold down to get your camera set up to your view? I think it's Control-Alt-Zero. Yep, there it is. And then you can hit G and Z and Z and move your, whoops, I've got the wrong thing selected right now, so I'm gonna right click just to drop that. Remember, if you have your camera off, you've gotta select the camera. So you can click on the outside of the camera, or you might have to come over here and click the eye to make it so that your camera is visible before you can select it. You can click on it in the outliner, but once it's selected, then you can hit G, C, Z, and you can pull out to frame your scene just where you wanted it or you can hit G and Z and you can scroll up and down inside of your camera view. You can hit G and X and scroll left to right. So you can adjust things in your frame and then once you have it in there, you can scroll in so you can see it a little better. Then you can go to save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and file save as and I'm gonna call this one my version eight because now I've added a background and I wanna keep my version seven 
before I did the background and messed around with all of these pins and everything, but um, go up to render and render the image. So let's just make sure that it looks the way that it's supposed to. This will take a moment and I can scroll back out. And I think that looks awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of that rendered image and I will right click and I'm gonna save that as my thumbnail rendered bowling alley scene okay and that'll be fun when I make my video I'll be able to use that for the cover photo of my video and then I'm gonna close this rendered view and go file save and submit that to me to the Dropbox.